Today, Google just came out with a great new feature that's going to be really helpful for students and teachers and basically anyone using Google Docs. It's called add-ons, and you'll notice that it's up in the menu bar of your documents, your spreadsheets, and other um, Google apps. And there's lots of different choices, but today I'm going to show you one that helps with research. Now, in the past, you may have used the Google Research tab. So if you go to Tools and go to Research, on the right-hand side, there is the Research tool. And here, you can search for anything in Google. Images, Google Scholar, which is probably the best if you want to find credible resources. There's some great documents here. You can use Quotes, Dictionary, as well as Tables. So what you would do is just type in your Google search of the topic you're looking for and it will pop up with a bunch of different things. So here are some PDFs, the first three here. If I scroll down it has some web results. Um, then there's also images and lots of things below but again I can search for that separately um, by changing this to images or whatever to filter my results. Now let's say I am interested in this first one, the Wikipedia article. If I clicked on this link, it would open up the article in a new tab in my browser. But I could also preview it by clicking Preview. Now let's say I've read this and I've put it in my own words, I've come up with an argument or a claim that I want to use or some evidence, then I can insert the link into my document. And so I could be talking about it and use that link right there. Now let's say that I want to cite it in my source. So I want to have a footnote and I want I'm going to click Cite, and it will put the little footnote next to my um, sentence. So if I'm putting a quote in or something like that, I can cite it. So that's what that little one is. But if I go down to the bottom of the screen, it's cited for me properly as a um, footnote. But maybe you need to do an assignment and you need to use APA in your science class, or in your English class, maybe you're using MLA right up at the top of the page there's this arrow right here. If I click down on it I can change the citation to MLA, APA, or Chicago. I could also filter by license to see whether it's something I could use or share. If I want to put an image in my document I can make sure it's one that has been set that anyone can use that image. Now this research tool is an amazing resource for you, but it doesn't put things in an actual bibliography. So I'm going to show you a new tool in the add-ons. So add-ons, if you click up at the top, it says you can do more with docs, and then you're going to want to choose get add-ons. It's going to give you a bunch of different lists that this has been opened to um, lots of different companies. The API is open to everyone. So maybe you want to create labels. Avery now allows you to create mail merge labels. But the one that we're going to choose today is EasyBib. So you're going to scroll down and look for EasyBib, which I think I've passed. Oh, there it is, right here, this big orange one. EasyBib is going to allow us to create a bibliography. So I'm going to click on the plus, and it's free for me to download, and it came up with a request for permission. You're going to want to accept that, and then this will be added in your add-ons. So now it says that we can search for it here, and we can click learn more, but I'm going to close that, and then I'm going to show you how to use it. So to access EasyBib whenever I want, I'll go to add-ons, and this will be in every document that I go into. So I'm going to choose Easy Bib Bibliography Creator, and I'm going to manage my bibliography. It's going to open up my bibliography information on the right-hand side of the page. And right now, I don't have any sources chosen yet, but I can put in the title of a book by typing in the title, the ISBN or keywords, and search for it. I can type the same sorts of things in for a journal article, or I could also put in a website. So if you're doing research for genetically modified organisms, maybe you're using this article from Newsla about a Florida mom suing Pepperidge Farm over natural and its goldfish labels. And so it's um, looking at GMO foods. So if I read this article and I'm talking about it in my paper, I can copy by pressing Control-C 
on the um, highlighted web URL. And then in EasyVid for the website, I'm going to paste in that website and press search, and it should find it. And then I just double check by looking here, and this is the same article, so I'm going to select it to add it to my bibliography. So here it's added in my um, bibliography, but it's not yet in my document. Let's say I go and I search and I find another article about GMOs helping to end world hunger and I use this as a reference. I can copy this URL and it's a website so I'm going to paste it here. Search and this was my document that I used so I'm going to press select and now these are both in my bibliography. Now let's pretend that I am done with my essay or my report now I want to add the bibliography to my doc, and I can choose again MLA, APA, or Chicago. Since this is for science, I'm going to choose APA. I notice that it changed the bibliography. You can kind of preview it by clicking on the different ones. And now to add it to my document, I'm going to choose Add Bibliography to my doc. And notice that it put it in the correct format. So it started with the bibliography on the left and then it indented the second line for each of my bibliography references. So this is a wonderful tool that you should use and it will make your life so much easier when creating your bibliographies for your research projects.